Welcome to another week update with Lytton and my limbo program here on my arm. Hi Lytton, how are you doing? Yeah, not very bad, not, not bad at all. Thank you very much, Jody. Just uh, logged in to look at your statistics. Uh, found myself staring at your uh, tortoise up to no good all over your yoga mat. Um, <laughs> which is very amazing. Yeah, while I was having my dinner today, uh, the the tortoise, it's my daughter's that I'm looking after, uh, decided to uh, empty its bowels whilst I was eating, which wasn't the, the nicest thing. But yes, I thought I'd share that with my Instagram followers. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that is it, it's called Alexa, right? Is that right? Alexa, yeah, which is very annoying when you've got an Alexa. I imagine it is. So... I'm glad to see Alexa was, was excited by fibrous vegetables, though. Um, you know, that that's amusing. But to, talking of your Instagram videos as well, um, one of my favourite, most colourful ones that you've made recently uh, is one of your stories, which encountered, um, you counted strawberries wrong. I just wanted to point this out after our conversation last week. You said, I've just put a couple of strawberries on here. Um, and I just wanted to check if you know what couple means. <laughs> Okay, a couple probably means two. I think there was five very large ones. We're, we're <laughs> a bit generous. How how was um your? I guess it was a protein based ice cream. It wasn't really ice cream. How did your body react to it, like blood sugar wise? Well, surprisingly good because I'm I'm obviously dubious about using protein after kind of what we've talked about and what it's done to my blood sugar. Uh, but I'll just show the uh, viewers there that actually, um, basically all it was was Greek yogurt mixed with uh, protein shake powder. And then I put some 100% chocolate on top, which has spiked my blood sugar before. Uh, and then I put um, the four very large strawberries on the top. And as you can see, it, it did bring it up slightly, but it certainly didn't take it over the top. And there's not too much of a big uh, lift. So I'm really happy with that. I think if you if you pinch the timeline there a little bit, you'll see the data looks a little bit different. You'll see actually it is a bit more of a spike than it looks if you zoomed all the way in. Okay. Uh, you are right. <laughs> So that, <laughs> that is how that is how people tell stories of data so it, it's definitely a spike but let's see where you were when we started this process back on the first of july first of all you were eight kilograms heavier so you've continued to lose weight which is fantastic yeah um since the first of july it's getting towards the end of um august now you have you've lost just over eight kilograms um which is great so, you know, there's there's a, a lot of change there, but your blood sugars, when we first started talking, you were over that blue zone. You know, you were yeah. over the, the limit all the time. So the spike you've had there, um, I'm guessing before you wouldn't necessarily have made that chocolate ice cream with Greek yogurt. No, this is why, because this was the second thing that I've had sweet. I made the, um, I don't know why I've got balloons coming up on my Zoom. Um, it was congratulating me for the eight kilos lost, I think. Uh, <laughs> voice recognition. Um, the only thing that I've had before was kind of that cheesecake thing that I made with the sa uh, soft cheese and the double cream and then today i had that protein sheet shake thing which i just saw on instagram and thought i would try it um what is it the 100 percent chocolate which is lifting my blood sugar or do you think it's the strawberries or the protein shake or just a mixture of them all it it's pro so is that that's actually 100 percent chocolate just melted yeah so it's really bitter and not sweet at all Right, it, it just it looks delicious, and it looks like that stuff that you pour on from a bottle that goes high. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's not going to be that. It's those strawberries. It's the amount of strawberries that you have on there. It's not a couple. Yeah. That many strawberries it is more sugar than your blood can handle at one time. Okay, um, so you're processing them very quickly. Strawberries are, are, are um, they're, they're nature sweets, really. Um, so you are kind of eating the sweets there, which is why if you start to I can see why you put them on if you've got 100% chocolate on it kind of masks the bitterness but 
as your taste buds change, you do start to notice um, the, the way you perceive chocolate changes massively. Uh, so I would say try reducing, first of all, the size of your strawberries as well, because they're, they're quite large strawberries. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you just chop them up and put them around the edge, you filled that circle, you've made it visually pleasing and you've ticked the box, um, but you're eating less sugar by doing so. So the, the, the context there is, although you had that only a small spike and you stayed within the zone, limbo, uh, and I can see there was a, uh, from behind the scenes, I can see actual analysts got involved there and said, hey, try and reduce the sugar content on your plate. That sugar is gonna be in strawberries. Yeah. What, so, yeah. It's a great change, but there's room for improvement, which is why you got a bit of, you know, it's, it's your first bad feedback for a while. And you know what was really interesting? Because I haven't had protein, like fake protein for quite a few weeks now, it tasted so sweet. It was unbelievable. Like my system was like, wow, I actually felt like I was eating a bag of granulated sugar. It was so sweet. And those strawberries were super sweet as well. So it just goes to show my taste buds are changing. Mm, that's amazing to hear. I, I think, you know, if you now go and buy yourself a croissant or something, you'll probably find, wow, this is weirdly sweet. So for me, yeah. I, I'll eat uh, white white bread. It tastes like brioche or something. Suddenly I'm like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know this stuff was so sweet. Um, it's weird. It's very funny. But yeah, generally this week, your challenge that you gave me last week was to be carb conscious. And to be honest with you, I have... Like with my breakfast in the morning, I haven't been piling because I used to pile half my plate with like tomatoes and mushrooms. And I just haven't gone as generous as I used to be and really focusing on more protein. Mm -hmm. Which so, means that you are working, your body is working to get the energy out of that food. Uh, and that's great. Protein gives you building blocks. It's not just energy. It gives you stuff to, you know, it gives your body stuff to build with. So the strawberries there, there's a minimal amount of stuff other than um, just energy when, when you think about fueling yourself with strawberries. Um, but what we're trying to do here is we're trying to access your fat reserves and get rid of those. So, yeah. you know, powering your brain with some of the, the stuff you've got in the tank. And now it looks like we... a managing this week, I also, um, because, of course, England were playing on uh, Sunday, so I made some creative things. Uh, only white foods happen to be cheese. So I had quite a lot of cheese this week, uh, and I, I've lost a little bit of weight this week, maybe half a kilo. Uh, but I think maybe I've had a bit too much cheese, which is very calorific, maybe this week. So from from what I can see here, Cheese, uh, it, it's protein and fat heavy. The, the fermentation takes the sugar out of the milk. So what's happening here is you're probably, if you're eating loads of it, you're taking in more energy than you need, but it's not as bad as if, you're, uh, if you'd eaten white cheese sandwiches, you know, yeah. with white bread on, because that would, that would, the rate at which the energy goes into your body counts massively, uh, especially because your um your insulin response is out of whack as a new person um so the rate of that matters so yeah the chances are if you're if you're consuming less energy for fun then you might have lost more weight absolutely so how much of this stuff that you eat counts but i saw your posts on uh on, on the day where you made england flags and straight away i was like well hang on a minute i recognize that's little bread sandwiches and whatever and it wasn't and i was actually quite impressed that it was there was so much cheese you're being very creative about it it's good work can i just point out that buffet was for three people it wasn't just for me <laughs> don't worry but again the good thing with that was it was like a plate of cheese with a line of tomatoes so again that was really 75 percent versus protein versus you know just 25 percent carbs which i think also visually exciting but also carb well as well 
Um, my nudges this week I've had for the first time about the low intensity walk because I'd heard about this. Uh, you know, you do your training course where you can go through and it talks about the low intensity walk. But this is the first time I've had a nudge about it this week. So low intensity exercise is massively underrated. And, it, and it's um, I think I imagine compared to other people because of the amount of exercise you log because you know because of your work uh most people get nudged much earlier about that because a lot of people have a you know a really sedentary lifestyle uh yeah. sitting at the computer and then sitting at dinner sitting in the car whatever um so they get that nudge much much easier uh, much much earlier and the reason that we like to do low intensity activity um at particular times is it helps your body regulate its blood sugar so it's it's the it's the timing that is much more important than the time spent so if you have just eaten and you've got like this window where your body starts to digest and metabolize your food um you we often send out nudges which are saying look go for a 20 minute walk um but make it low intensity low intensity steady state so it's known as LIS it's like the um the, the sibling of HIT high intensity interval training stuff so what low intensity training does for you um it, it's a walk it's a stroll maybe where you could still hold a conversation or you could do it maybe on an exercise bike you could do swimming uh you could do dancing around the house all sorts of other things that you can do but if you start to push your heart rate above 130, which as you're tracking your heart rate, you can see whether that happens or not. Yeah. Um, that that takes you out of low intensity exercise and into high intensity exercise. Um, so after you eat dinner, you, you've got like a, a window of around 20 minutes to, uh, sorry, of, of around an hour to fit in 20 minutes exercise. That's kind of one of the habits we try and lead you to. And it's one that after limbo, a lot of people just keep on because yeah. it's just, I mean, walking is a superpower that a lot of people are gifted with. Most people are gifted with. Uh, we completely underrate it because we think, well, the only way to do exercise really is to go to drive myself to the gym and spend an hour there. So instead of doing that, I'll just give up. When actually what you could do is walk for 20 minutes, just do it after dinner or, you know, after, after you've eaten your heavy meal. So it, it's a... It's advice that when I first started, I had real trouble doing because it's like, well, I've just had dinner. I'm at home with the kids and I can't leave my house. So I ended up doing it on the exercise bike. But I also found in, in um, people's social lives, when they're in limbo, they'd start to find ways to do stuff. Like if they're going out to a restaurant, um, they would they would go for a walk afterwards. Yeah. But a walk to a pub that's a bit further away or whatever for the next drink. <laughs> It, it works really well because it's actually it's like um you know it's, it's not it, for a long time people have been talking about going for a, a walk after dinner just to, to help the digestion or whatever um you've got the data that shows what it actually does so it's yeah. low intensity exercise after dinner um that we often suggest but I, I think the amount of people in limbo the amount of limbo members who have said i actually gave up the gym because i was going there and i didn't see any progress but I started walking and I definitely saw uh, the fat start to move away. And it's not the walking that actually does it because, you know, the old um, the old saying about you can't exercise yourself out of a bad diet. I mean, yeah. that all of the, the recent research shows that. And I think there's a lot of, of miseducation that we've gone through at the hands of people like, Kellogg's and Coca-Cola who have funded medical research into you can drink as much coke as you want as long as you exercise yeah um but actually the research shows that what happens is is uh that's not really true you can't just exercise your way out of eating whatever the hell you want it doesn't work for anybody now I think I've perfected my uh intermittent fasting now all week I've been having two meals uh one at 9 30 and my second one about two o'clock so I've got my window to about five hours and that just seems to give me the energy uh, for my evening classes and also my lunchtime, late morning classes. 
Uh, and to be honest with you, I haven't really been feeling hungry in the evening. Are right. you shocked at that, or do you think that's normal? I, I've seen it lots and lots of times. But what's what's brilliant is you've become really engaged with what your body needs from you. So it's not it's not normal. Normal is eating three meals plus two snacks a day because that's what we've been taught to do. Um, but that's not normal for your physiology or my physiology necessarily. What you've done is you're going through through a process of discovering, look, what is it that you need? And also that will change. That changes as your body changes. Um, you have a very different lifestyle from me when it comes to work. I sit down and, you know, I have conversations over Slack and whatever all day, whereas you go and do Aqua and, and whatever else. So I think to say that you and I have to have exactly the same kind of meal regime would be stupid. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, you know, some people need four to five little meals a day that are very protein heavy. It's different. So I think, is it normal or no, but you're kind of, what you're doing is you're finding a way to live in a healthy way, according to what all the data tells you, which is, it's a bit like you've got a dashboard into your system that you've never had before. So you don't have to just go by the old rules of make sure you have three meals and two snacks. So what's my challenge this week then, Lytton? What should I improve next? I I don't I don't want to say strawberries, um, but <laughs> I'm staying I, carb conscious. Don't worry. I know I haven't perfected that yet. But I, it's it's the it's the sugar that's kind of hiding in plain sight for you. I, I'd, I'd look out for. So, you know, sugar, when you add it as a cube, very, very easy to spot. But things that cause your blood sugar to spike are often in those sources and, and whatever else. And in just. The, the things that are supposed to be healthy, um, a strawberry is healthy. We, we had a, there was a member who who wrote back to us through the app, which you can do, um, saying, hang on a minute, oranges are really healthy. Um, but look, if you, if you eat a few oranges and your blood sugar spikes, you have to decide, hang on, are, are they really as healthy as you think they are? Yeah. And that's one of the things we go through. So uh, I, I think, let, let's say you're becoming more carb conscious, but that's going to be a bit of a journey for you because we're, you know, we're still looking to lose another 20 kilograms plus, right? Yeah. Um, so this time I want you to advance your carb consciousness by looking out for carbs in things that are supposedly healthy, which you've got, you're getting more and more of a handle on. Yeah. Um, but those, that mountain of strawberries, uh, that, that was kind of telltale. Uh, the amount of tomatoes you put on your plate as well. You know, there's a there's more carbohydrates than you think there are because a tomato is a fruit. It's where um, all the energy from that plant goes. So looking at my limbo line, that's like five days there. Do you want me to completely flat line? Is that what my goal is? Can you can you press the little pink thing so the, the heart rate goes away? The little heart. Yeah, um, there we go. So what you've got there is your your um your limbo line has been brought into the zone which is great so we've brought you into the zone where most of the time your body has only around five grams of sugar in it but if you look at the pattern yeah. the pattern is still a roller coaster some yeah. of those pieces for you are exercise so that's okay but like the one that, that we just looked at earlier doesn't look like a spike from when you look at it close up but when you when you kind of squeeze it in you'll notice that it moves so rapidly it is actually a blood sugar spike yeah so i i think uh let's say this is a challenge that you only have spikes in limbo that you cause on purpose but not from food so you can cause spikes on purpose by doing cold showers you can cause yeah. spikes on purpose by doing exercise I don't want you to cause spikes on purpose by eating 25 strawberries. <laughs> so now, as flat as possible, except for exercise. Okay. Now, for the first time ever since I've been a diabetic seven years, I've actually gone low. I've never, ever, ever been low before. Is this a good thing or should I be wary of going too low? 
you, you don't you don't need because you're not type one diabetic you, you don't need to to think about low in the same way um low so is a good thing for me low low is okay for you because the the bits of dark line that you're showing us there if yeah. we were to look close to it it's probably when you're asleep and what your body's saying yeah. is right let's drop that level of energy because you know all you need to do right now is breathe and your heart beats and your brain works and you have some dreams or whatever you're not walking you're not you're not doing much right yeah. so blood sugar does does drop but you've got you have a mechanism for increasing it again you have a hormone for increasing it again and that works so that that's okay wonderful right i am all set up then so we are going to catch up in a fortnight and I reckon I should be one or two kilos down by then. That's cool. And and I think um, next time we meet, I'm going to have, have some interesting news for you as well, I think, and for your followers. Oh, nice. Exciting. It was going to be September. Everyone's going to be full on the weight loss roller coaster machine, ready to go as well. So that's good. I think well, if you if you think about it, next time we meet in two weeks' time, there's going to be just under four months left of the year. Four months. I mean, look look at how you've been doing in two months. You, you've lost nearly eight kilograms. So if you go at that rate, that's that's enough time to lose another sixteen kilograms before yeah. the end of the year. That's crazy. So yeah, I think everybody's going to be in the same kind of uh, in the same mood. I hope. Yes, they will. Wonderful. Right. Well, thank you very much, Latun. We will speak in a fortnight. Look after that uh, tortoise. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>